Uh, thank you very much. Um, and welcome to the remix of the financial landscape. So if you put yourself in the shoes of a DJ or a music producer, what would be the skills that you need to master in order to create outstanding music? So first of all, the fundamentals. So technical understanding, knowledge of music, um, contacts to promoters and to venues, and of course, tons of experience and probably hours of trial and error. And although most of the successful players took many years to get to their current fame, um, sometimes out of nowhere, totally unexpected, new players hit the scene and they give the established players a hard time and a lot of headache. And this actually happens at the moment in the financial landscape in Germany, in Europe, and all over the world. So how would you actually start with a remix? So you pick the original song and you um, start to work with it. So for us, in the context of retail banking, this means that you use the traditional and well-known instruments to operate. And currently, though, banks face a long-lasting low-interest uh, environment um, in, in Germany and in Europe, which decreases their profits dramatically, and it gives them a very hard time and challenges their traditional business model. Beyond that, factors such as legacy IT, regulatory burdens, and increase of cost make it even more difficult for them to earn money. In Germany, 80% of, in 80 and in, I think in UK, it's actually even 90% of all the IT resources are permanently allocated to regulatory requirements and regulatory projects. So this leaves only 10 to 20% um, only to new products and new innovations development. So if we at DKB and other players in the industry would have only one wish free to regulators and jurisdiction, um, it would be give banks a break and let them play to evolve and compete on a market that prepares for a fundamental shift of power. So these mentioned circumstances don't make it easier for retail banks to manage um, the, 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 the new market shift. And um, this market is already, as we see, very, very fragmented, be it in Germany and probably um, everywhere in Europe. Um, we see rapid technological developments. We, we see changing of consumer needs. But above all, we see evolving competition. So on the one hand, we see the neo banks and challenger banks, such as N26, Atom, Monzo, Starling, you name them. They start with a greenfield approach, right? They don't have any legacy to deal with, and they have tons of marketing dollars on their accounts by venture capital. On the other side, we have um, the big techs, such as GAFA or BAT from Asia, and they have even more money. Um, they have a lot of experience and the creme de la creme of talent. Apple, for example, out of the GAFA, they just announced their own credit card, huh? the, the Apple card that will hit the US in summer of this year. Um, and this will be a, yeah, a revolution of customer experience with their own credit card. And it is just, for, for example, in terms of rewards and cashbacks, this time it's seriously only cash it is that hits your account. It is no, no points, no annoying miles that you need to uh, collect in a dedicated app for that. Um, so it's just a virtual and a physical card directly connected to your iPhone. So this development happened in just a very few years and many industry veterans are still in shock about this. So you ask yourself, what can we and others in the industry do to deal with that and to defend ourselves against these nuclear weapons? So first of all, manage the balance between your core strength and be as open-minded as possible. So we at DKB, as an example of a German online bank, we took time to consider and check our options and focus on our core strength, which is cost customer trust and full focus on the customer. So we ask our customers proactively for modifications of our product, um, for new features, new functionalities that we need to develop. Um, we focus very much on, the, the, um, on, on uh, customer surveys, on A-B testing, on focus group to develop and make our development even more uh, efficient. We use data to enrich the experience um, of our customers and uh, to manage their banking in a way that it is not pain, but joy. And last but not least, we focus on regulatory excellence. Because this is still one of the major points where the new players, the neobanks, have a hard time to deal with. 
And everybody in Germany who read the newspapers yesterday know exactly what I'm talking about, and maybe we hear some news later when some uh, of, this, of these guys are on stage as well. However, there are many topics where banks have to alter their frameworks fundamentally. And in the stormy water of increasing competition, we need to promote customer loyalty. Um, such as develop products and services that will be fully implemented in our daily lives as a one-stop shop for financial services. And we need to embrace the mindset that certain developments might not bring in quick returns or huge returns spot on, but more on the long term. We look at companies at DKB and products in the market that already established themselves and were well positioned and already brought some nice innovations in one market or different industries. One framework, for example, or one example is a framework from Google's Larry Page and his famous toothbrush test that determine a product's impact on our daily life. So he asks, is it like a toothbrush? You use it once or twice a day and it does make your life better. And translating that into retail banking means that we will have to integrate solutions to our customers that they will use effortless, effortlessly and frequently in their daily lives um, and they love using it. And this actually brings me to another great quote. This one is by Charles Darwin. He says that it's not the strongest of a species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. And for DKB, this means that we create our own composition and choose the best solutions from each world, both banking and technology. So we see many tactics and strategies from neobanks uh, and the big techs that, that, we, that we really like. So we borrow puzzle pieces and we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time, right? Um, and thus we are moving in the direction of a tech bank. Although I like actually the philosophy of Jack Ma from Alibaba a bit better, who says it's not a tech bank, it's a tech fin, right? So the combination of a technological corporation with a banking license, full focus on financial services. So what does it mean for us? Um, we merge our core assets, the very strong fin part, and we merge it with the technology part, so we go into a uh, technical and organizational excellence. And we know all that, yes, everybody's talking about agile processes and uh, digitalization, full digital solutions, but this is something we really need to put in our DNA. We need to live it. Um, so we need to scale. We need to spot technological trends first. And yes, we need to uh, get the right talent on board. And everybody's talking about, yeah, we need the techies, the software developers, architects, UI, UX designers. That's true. But let's not forget the guys translating this into business and vice versa. And of course, let's not forget the storytellers. So while focusing on this path, we see certain trends coming up. One of the trends is semantic banking. So products and services need to be offered to the customer in a complete different way than they are at the moment. So nobody wakes up in the morning and wishing for a consumer credit or a mortgage. Uh, this is just not happening. I wake up in the morning and I think about the game tomorrow, the soccer game, when I invited my friends coming over and I think, ah, eh, my TV is too small. Or I'm in discussion with my wife about the family planning and uh, we both notice that our apartment might be a bit too tiny as well. These are typical life events. And banks nowadays think and develop products from a total different direction, 180 degrees. But to come back to my example, so I'm watching TV and I notice the TV is too small, right? So, and I, I want a, a better and a bigger TV. So what is going to happen next? I go to Amazon. Um, I check all my TVs there. I go to ratings, reviews, and I spot one that I really like. So I go on shopping, uh, I want to buy, and I see, ooh, I cannot afford it. It's way too expensive. But Amazon offers me a fair loan spot on. So I don't ask myself, mm, do I have a, a banking license? Are they regulated? I don't care. Since 15 years or more, I'm a happy and a loyal customer of Amazon, and they never betrayed me so far, and I hope it's never going to happen, so I trust them. I click buy, and um, tomorrow or the same day, I receive my TV, and tomorrow with the boys, I can watch the, t uh, the, the game on the new TV. So imagine that even further for more 
expensive or more complex products, such as a car. Why not buy a car for 50,000 euros on Amazon? Why not buy your apartment or house for 500,000 euros on Amazon? This might be possible in the future, and it happens where the people are anyways. Second example of semantic banking, I go every year in winter with my family to the Austrian Alps for a snowboarding trip. Um, so imagine uh, I cross the border from Germany to Austria, and I receive a push notification from my bank, DKB, informing me, hey, Sasha, we actually um, noticed that you don't have a foreign health insurance for you and your family. Um, but don't worry, Sasha, we got your back, we got you covered. Um, we offer you now for seven days for you and your family health insurance. Just click yes, and you're good to go. And this is exactly what I do. I don't bother with it. I focus on snowboarding and my family. Second trend that we see is CUI, or conversation user interfaces. So in the last three years, we noticed a dramatic change in communication. So um, traditional methods and even social media um, is, 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 all, is the new old school, right? And people started to communicate in, um, in messengers, such as Facebook messengers, WeChat, uh, and WhatsApp. And these messengers have many, many ad uh, advantages, and especially the younger target group, right? The millennials embrace it heavily. Um, just, a, just a couple of, uh, of advantages. So, uh, conversation user interface look always the same. So, they are always a conversational dialogue, like on WhatsApp, right? I don't need to learn new clicking path, new UI, UX from a new app. Um, I just, it, is, it comes to me naturally. Um, the same is, um, it is call to action triggered. And the technology, sorry, the new technology such as natural language processing, machine learning, and even artificial intelligence helps to increase the speed and the quality of bot interactions with humans, be it for customer service, for sales, or even for standard operations, such as transactions. And on top of this, voice assistance will help very much to increase the possibilities and the qualities of the service. So Alexa, pay my phone bills. Or Siri, please transfer 100 euro to my daughter's savings account and make it a monthly standing order is already possible, and this is something that we expect to be in the future, especially for very simple standard operations. But most important uh, about conversational UI is that it will introduce the shift from transactions to interactions in banking. But how do we build this remix together? And of course, there are plenty of ways to do that. Um, for us, one, one option is actually, or something that we think about, is marketplaces, right? So. What makes them so successful? Marketplaces are there for like thousands of years. Um, marketplace has always their own products and their own services. Huh? They, are, they, are, they appear very, very open to me. Um, I can see them um, uh, directly in my face. Um, but it gives access to third parties um, to in, a boss, in the best possible way. So I, as a consumer, can find everything in one place in the moment where, when I need it. And banks can do the same, right? They can leverage their existing customer relationship and open up for third parties as well. So a long-lasting success factor of Remix is for us and for many other players in the industry, collaboration. And we at DKB started a long time ago already in establishing partnerships, collaboration with startups, with fintechs, and with established players from all over the, inter uh, all over the, all over the industry, industry. And we see many, many um, advantages um, why we do this, and one is actually that we, uh, that we, that we see that um, success and in individual products derive best from partnerships, especially time to market, outstanding user interface and user experience, because a startup that we collaborate together with in a partnership focuses 100% on this topic. We as a bank, this is just impossible for us, right? We have so many topics and so many, 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 many uh, stuff to, to deal with. And at the same time, it, is, it, f it focuses 100% on the relevant consumer needs. So with marketplaces or uh, platforms, fully digital solutions will be curated in one place, which helps us to make the right offers at the right time. Um, but with all of this, with all those ongoing alterations, we need to consider our audience all the way long, right? Um, because they are getting more diverse all the time, diverse by age, 
uh, like how they grew up with technology, um, how they are uh, their varying tech affinity, are they early adopters, late adopters, and of course diverse, how they want to uh, communita communicate with us with what channels they use and with what language they actually use, what, what dialect, uh, especially in Germany, like do and z is something that is, that is fundamental for people how to be addressed with. But as diverse as our customers are, our employees are in these times. And first of all, we have an awesome crew at DKB. Um, our core message to all the teams in DKB is we look after each and everyone. And by taking everybody in the company seriously, we're listening to what they care about, their ideas, and we nurture their performance and their talent. But then we have a different message, different speeches to two groups. The one, the employees in the core department, this is group A, and the second group is the guys in research and development, our disruptors. So for the first group, we tell them, digitize as best as you can, but don't destroy the current business model. Optimize it, cherish it, digitize it where you can do it, and as good as possible, but keep the operation stable and ongoing and smooth. To the second group, we say, destroy our traditional business model. Do it as best as you can and give, give everything to actually do it. And of course, this communication leads to tension. Huh? We tell all the teams we are all dancing on the same dance floor. Um, but if we don't do it, someone else will do it for sure. So this is how we establish our own powerful attacker team. And if we are successful, Everyone is on the same dance floor and we can party the entire night together. And I personally believe we at DKB, we are on a very, very good track record and we, have, uh, we are successful in the future to do that. But it might sound crazy to act like this, but in the end, it's all about dance or die. And we want to dance. And now it's time to turn it up. Thank you very much.